Broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello everyone. So welcome to the COC Youth Action Update. So we're going to try to do the video cam. Well, there we go. Going in. <laughs> Hello. Hello everyone. Okay, so um, this is Elizabeth Perez. I am one of the program's senior, senior program managers and project manager for the Youth Line of Action. And with me is my co-lead, Carrie Moy from DFSS. Um, and we have a special guest with us today. Anna Carvelin from the HMIS team. Great. Um, and you may be wondering why we're asking Anna to join us. Um, so we have some great information about the Family Unification Program and how to navigate HMIS. So she's going to be showing us how to walk through that. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. So let's see if I can just switch over the view to HMI to my screen so hopefully everyone can see my screen all right um so in the last couple of updates we've been talking about the family unification program so hopefully everyone is aware um what it is so last year we were able to obtain vouchers um through the family unification program which is short to fup um in order to refer young people that have been experiencing homelessness. Um, young people do have to be the head of household so they can be single or they can be a parenting youth and they must be between the ages of 18 uh, years of age and no more than 24. Um, they have had to have had um, left foster care or will be leaving foster care within the 90 days um, and once we've identified the eligibility for a young person, um, what the FUP program provides is a CHA voucher for a period of 36 months, um, along with rental assistance, and there's going to be supportive services provided either by DCFS or a COC housing provider, provider for 18 months. Um, so hopefully everyone is aware of, kind of those eligibilities. We've had had a few vouchers left over from the previous FUP program that we've been able to um, get some of our young people into, um, and we've done it slightly different. Uh, but moving forward, we'll be utilizing HMIS um, and identifying our young people through our HMIS system. So uh, this year with these vouchers, um, we will be identifying any young person that has identified any involvement with DCFS, either through their coordinated entry assessment, or we are able to have service providers indicate and up, do an update assessment in HMIS to indicate that update. Um, so now I'll tr I'm gonna switch over to Shelter Point, um, so that way you're able to view how you should go ahead and do that in the event that you have identified a young person who perhaps didn't identify or disclose to the skilled assessor that there has been some DCFS involvement, but through your relationship, they've disclosed this. And you wanna make sure that that information is updated so we're able to reach out to that young person and hopefully get them connected with a voucher. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah you know, so. I'm gonna move. And then Liz, feel free to jump in if I'm saying anything wrong about the process part of it, but I'll show you what we're doing on HMIS here. Um, so we have a fake client here who's in transitional housing, and we have two scenarios, one where they're exited and one where they're still enrolled. So I'm going to show you both. <clears throat> Okay, so let's start with the one who's still there, because that would be the most likely situation, right? So um, you're going to go to interim update, add an interim review, select the new option family unification program, save and continue, and then 
so there's a new a couple of new questions added at the bottom just to this update. So it's not on the regular assessment. So you scroll all the way down. <clears throat> and it's here. And no, it is. Yes, it is. Okay, so um, family reunification question for eligibility, identification, and consent. So is the youth 18 to 24 currently enrolled in your project? This question might seem a little weird if obviously they're enrolled and you put an interim update. Um, but the reason we put that in is because sometimes people don't exit. So when you get a report from us, that means that they were still enrolled in the project. So we're just double checking here to make sure that you know and you're double checking to make sure they're still enrolled. So, um, and then if yes, did the youth indicate previous engagement with DCFS? And then if identified as eligible for FUP, did the youth provide consent to participate and share information with DCFS? And you should be aware of what that, what that consent form looks like, and that's unique to this project. And then if yes, please indicate the date youth provided consent and which it was uploaded, and the date which it was uploaded into HMIS. So I will show you how to um, upload that consent in just a minute. And for the other options, I'm going to delete these real quick. And then I'm going to save and exit out of that. Actually, they're going to ask me to fill in. OK, so the homeless question is filled out and save and exit. And then exit out of there. So then now you have this interim update. So then I will show you what happens if a client's already exited. And then I'll show you how to upload the uh, consent. So for the follow up, click on follow up. The add the follow up review. It's the same situation, same pick list items. Um, FUP update follow up. And then this only has those questions. So just pick the same, it's the same exact questions. And then this is only in the case that um, they would have been exited. And you, you can't add a follow-up if they haven't been exited. You can't add an interim if they have been exited. Well, you can, but you have to backdate it. But So this is why we have the two different options. Um, Okay, so we've got the follow-up and the interim, and then what you're going to do to add your um, consent is click on this clip here to add the attachment, add a new file attachment, and then um, I won't dig into Liz's files here, but you would just choose the file and add it, and then put the uh, what the file is. Okay, um, and then what you'll see if you actually did that is a little one there too also. So I think we're good with the HMIS piece of it. Any questions or? Okay, thank you. Right. So we're going to check real quick if there's any questions. Um, there's is a lot. Oh. So is the FUB consent form for information to be shared on HMIS? Um, so that's a great question, Megan. The FUB consent form is not for information to be shared on HMIS. So any individual who has their information shared in HMIS should have an HMIS consent form. Right? Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of um, service providers complete that that documentation as part of their intake process in order to have their information in HMIS. What the FUP referral form does is they will share their information and they are consenting that we in turn are able to share their information with DCFS um, because what we will do on our end once we have all those referral forms is we are able to give identifying information to DCFS to do a cross check to ensure that that young person is eligible for the program. Um, so they're slightly different, um, but they're both 
And CHA. Thanks, Carrie. Yes. Yeah, so the FUP consent form also allows for CHA to have their information as well. Um, so that's why we've added on um, this additional consent form on top of the HMIS consent form that is usually seen um, with our different providers. Great. All right. Um, so I don't see any more questions, but you may be typing them up. Um, so what we'll be doing just to kind of know, so now that you've seen what the process is to update it in HMIS, um, within the next couple of days, all Chicago staff will be reaching out to um, service providers who may already have a young person in their program that has um, has indicated some D DCFS involvement um, prior either through the, the assessment um, the coordinated entry assessment, um, or maybe someone has already gone ahead and updated this information. Um, if so, they'll be uh, Max Burns will be reaching out to them and providing the referral form to um, update it and get that consent um, signed by the young person. Um, now we have another question: Does the head of household have to be the only person with foster care? experience what if the household's children have been connected to DCFS? Um, so if you're seeing, so what we are looking at is for the head of household that went through foster care. Um, so that person would have to be the one that went through foster care. If you do have a family who maybe the children are connected with DCFS, you can feel free to reach out to me. Um, DCFS has identified their own internal process to identify family. Um, but, you know, if there is a family that you're working with and is a young person, we can also make that um, advocacy on behalf of the family. So I would still go ahead and reach out to me. Um, that way we know that that individual or that household's information and get, obtain that consent. Great. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Mm -hmm. All right. So let us switch back. Anna may want me to log out, so I'm going to log her out. Ooh. I don't want. Oh, sorry. Oh. sorry for the background noise, guys. We are in <laughs> the tiniest conference room. Great. Oh, okay. So now Carrie is going to talk to you about the youth housing model design process. So I think you guys have all heard this before, but we'll just touch back to it just to make sure we're all on the same page. So we started this work around our youth housing models um, to design the ones that were new and then proposed and then to look at all the ones we have and make sure as a whole system, as an array, they're, they're serving our the Chicago appropriately. And so the, the groundwork for this process started with the blueprint. So that was a, a community input process that we did a year ago now. Um, and it envisioned some new program models, but also sort of laid out what we thought was the right array of program models. And with this process, uh, we are trying to more deeply look at each program model. Um, the process is led by a national consultant, ICF, and uh, Nikki Paul is leading it. She's been fantastic so far. We're really, really impressed with her. Um, the program models that we're looking at are everything that's available for youth and everything that we've identified that we want for youth. So that's low threshold emergency shelter, transitional housing, therapeutic housing, joint transitional housing and rapid rehousing, rapid rehousing, uh, permanent supportive housing and youth respite housing. Um, there was a workshop that was held at the end of April. We had 30 stakeholders come to that workshop. They represented our youth programs, all types. Um, some family or some adult programs that serve a lot of youth, so some rapid rehousing programs that have been serving a lot of youth. Um, we also had the coalition there. We had four or five members of our youth advisory board came. Action. Youth action board. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I got that wrong. Um, and Chapin Hall was there. So a pretty broad range of stakeholders and they all, it was an intensive workshop, it was two days long and they shared, we all worked on designing each of these program models. And with that base, Nikki is creating a document, can you give me the next slide? <laughs> is creating a document um, that we're calling the Youth Housing Model Design Document right now. Um, so that will cover our over, like an overview of our philosophy and goals. Um, 
our values, and then it'll also lay out some universal program standards and training standards. And then the, the biggest part of this document are the com core components for each model. The goal here is that we have this community process to design what each model should be, and then we know, like, we can help each agency work towards pro providing this, like, goal standard or goal of service. Um, and also, she did some key takeaways and considerations to help us move this work forward, because we know every time we tackle one big hurdle, that just brings up the next one that we need to do. So the blueprint gave us a great place to go, and this is the next step in that process. And then the last thing here, this key takeaways and considerations, like keys us up for the next step. Um, so what are our next steps? So the draft document will be shared with the leadership team for their review first. And then we will send it to everyone who is a member of the Chicago Task Force on Homeless Youth on Friday the 21st for their review. Um, and you can review the document and bring your comments back to us on Friday the 28th. Um, to share at a public meeting. So the so Nick is going to be joining us on June 28th. Um, so this is a special convening that will be held here at All Chicago um, to talk about all, uh, you know, any input that you have on the document that was provided. Um, and then, you know, we'll be identifying some next steps at that meeting mm -hmm. as well. So our goal here is that we had our stakeholders who were really deep in the process of program design come to the workshop and now we have an open community meeting, so everyone will have the opportunity to give us feedback. And yeah, that's happening here at All Chicago. Yep. So everyone should have received an invite uh, from myself. Um, if you did not, feel free to reach out to us, um, so that way you know you can reach out to me specifically, and I'll make sure that you do have it on your calendar. Uh, but definitely say the date, June um, 28th, a Friday from 10 until noon. Before you go to the next one, can we see if there's any questions? I don't know how to see if there's questions. Oh, there's a little icon. All right, we're going to check real quick if there's any questions. Okay, we have no questions yet. All right. So we're about to go on to the next topic. Um, I hope to see you guys all there at the at the program model meeting. And at the next meeting we're going to talk about, we can just go right into that. So the all COC meeting is coming up on Wednesday, the June 26th. Um, we're going to meet at the Salvation Army Freedom Center starting at 9 a.m. Um, we hope that everyone has registered to come and to, to this event. One exciting thing is um, after the main voting time of the event, we have breakout sessions, and one of those breakout sessions is diversion, and that's always an exciting thing to talk about. Yes, yeah, so the All COC meeting is an event that we have um, just twice a year, so it really gives us the opportunity to learn about um, what is happening in the continuum of care across the board. Um, and, you know, as we're mentioning, um, there is an important voting item that is coming up um, at this meeting. So we are encouraging everyone, um, you know, hopefully many of you will be able to attend. If you have not registered, please do so by June 19th. Um, we do have to close off the registration by that time. And we included the link so that way you're able to go on there and just register yourself or maybe some colleagues. Um, the, it's, it is a pretty long event, um, but the nice thing is we do breakout sessions. So as Carrie mentioned, there is a diversion topic and there are many, many more mm -hmm. topics that will be there. And you have the opportunity to choose and kind of learn about each of those topics. So we hope to see you there. Carrie and I will be there. Yeah. Um, so. You know, if we haven't met you yet, which we kind of seem like we know a lot of people, but feel free to <laughs> always reach out to us and introduce yourselves. We're more than happy to um, meet with everyone and have any questions and just like put a face with the name. Um, but there is one uh, important voting item or one of the important voting items is the action agenda. And if you go to the next slide, we just wanted to give you guys some time if you had any questions about what that is or if you had any feedback for us. Um, on, on the action agenda or how you've seen it work over this past year, year and a half. Um, you know, you've heard us change to using words like work group and project managers and action agenda. And um, just wanted to check in and see if anyone had any questions about what that means or how we're moving in this strategy. Do you have a question? No one has any questions. This is fantastic. <laughs> You're all experts. 
or I am expecting you to type faster than humanly possible. So I think for those of you that may not be as familiar with um, the action agenda, maybe you're new. Um, so under the action agenda, we have 12 lines of action. Um, that is, you know, youth is one of them. So youth mm -hmm. homelessness is one of them. And Carrie and myself are the uh, <laughs> project managers um, that oversee that youth line of action. Um, so we do work very closely with the other 11 lines as well, because we know that youth, you know, it's not just their own thing, but mm -hmm. we touch a lot of the different other lines of action. So, you know, we touch on coordinated entry, the crisis response, um, employment and income and mm -hmm. so forth. So as part of the project managers for each of the lines of action, we meet on a, on a weekly basis um, each Monday afternoon to just ensure that you know, as our work continues to move forward, that we are being very intentional of those intersections so we're not working in silos. So it's been around a year and a half that we've been working in this kind of style um, and the continuum of care had let us pilot it for this mm -hmm. long, um, but in this upcoming June meeting, they will be voting whether this is the structure that we wish to continue to move forward. Um, so, you know, if you have any questions or concerns about the structure, you know, we always encourage you to, you know, reach out to Carrie or ourselves or type away your question in the chat box. We're more than happy um, to address. We really just want to ensure that we hear if there's any concerns or questions or even praises. If you think we're doing great work, you know, also we, we're also happy to hear that as well. We really want to make sure that we are driving and Chicago is moving the needle on youth homelessness. And yeah. Yeah. And we do, we feel this like action oriented energy and things are, it seems, seems seem to be lining up. I'm very excited about what we've done so far this year. So, great. Still no questions. All right. Fantastic. I think the last line. Okay. So we have a pretty short update um, call this, this month. So, um, you know, if anyone else has any questions or updates that they wish, wish to share with the community. Um, um, so Carrie reminded me, one thing that we've been sharing is that Chicago will be part of the 100 day challenge. Um, so we did an initial meeting with the different communities that will be part of this second cohort. So, so far we know that we will form part with New Orleans and Santa Clara, Santa Clara. Clara thank you. Um, so it's three communities that will be joining. Um, so we're very excited to be part of this cohort. Um, we don't have an official start date, so we'll be more than happy to share that once yeah. we know. Uh, we think that we've hit the summer months, so as we know, people go on vacation and, you know, fun stuff like that. It just could be a little bit of a difficult time to kind of um, pick a good time to start. So. But we're eager to start and we're happy to just be part of the cohort and we've already started some very um, helpful dialogues about, you know, how point in time counted and all that fun stuff. So we look eager to knowing more and learning from each, each of those communities, anything that we can establish here, mm -hmm. um, as well as identify our goal that we're going to be working on within 100 days. Cool. I think that's everything. Great. Unless anyone had some outstanding questions. Awesome. And I know we usually have our Youth Action Board, a member from there. Unfortunately, they weren't able to join us today, but they'll I'm sure they'll join us the next time. So we do miss them. Um, but we always like to hear the, the wonderful work that they're doing um, and like to hold a place for them to share any updates. So that way you're aware of it as well. Thank you, everyone. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, if you have any outstanding questions or anything, you can always feel free to email us. Um, at aperez at allchicago.org or at carrie.moy at mm -hmm. thecityofchicago.org. Um, and we look forward to talking with you again um, on June 28th yep. or June 26th. We have a lot of meetings yeah. coming up in month um, or at the different work groups that we have. All right. Thank you. Bye. Have a great day.